Number 143 introduces an interesting concept. It introduces the bracket. And it says that any number that's inside this bracket is going to be less than or equal to whatever that thing, that, that object is. So bracket x would be would equal to the integer that is uh, less than or equal to x. This is very similar to a problem that we saw earlier that had a little target symbol where they would give us a rule for what this meant and then you had to apply it to, a, to an equation. In the case of 143, they give us the equation and it's bracket negative 1.6 plus bracket 3.4 plus bracket 2.7. So we just apply this rule to each of the brackets and then solve. So let's start from the right. 2.7. What is, what is the integer that is uh, less than or equal to 2.7? It's going to be 2. Uh, with 3.4, that's going to be 3. With negative 1.6, it's going to be negative 2. This is the part that could be a little tricky for some people because remember that when it's a negative number and you want the integer that's less than it, you're actually going to be more negative. You're going to go more negative, so it's going to be negative 2. Don't be tempted into putting negative 1, because then you'll get the wrong answer. Anyway, you add these up, cancel out the 2s, and you're left with a 3. And the 3 is also answer choice A. Number 144 says, uh, if 4 minus x over 2 plus x equals x, so 4 minus x over 2 plus x equals x, then what is x squared plus 3x minus 4? Hmm, interesting. Okay, well let's start by just cross multiplying. You get 4 minus x equals 2x plus x squared, because x times 2 is 2x, and x times x is x squared. And then, uh, why don't we, why don't we move these over, uh, this becomes, let's see, 3x plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. Um, x squared plus 3x minus 4. I'm just rearranging these here to make it a little bit more sightly. And, uh, well, what do you know? This equation is the same as this other equation that we're actually looking for the answer to. And we know that the answer is 0 because we just solved it. So then the answer is going to be 0. And 0 is one of the answer choices. It's C. That was easy. Number 145 has a drawing. I will attempt to draw this. It's a trapezoid. And it looks like this. Let me tell you this is B. And this is A. And there's a dotted line goes like that. Um, this is supposed to be straight. I know it looks kind of curved, but pretend it's, it's straight. Here we have five feet, and this is a right angle, and we have two feet right here. This question is going to be testing you on, on two separate things. It's going to be testing you on the Pythagorean theorem, and it's going to be also be testing you on uh, how to figure out the area of a trapezoid. So, as you know, Pythagorean theorem is just going to be x squared plus y squared equals z squared, where x and y are the, are the two sides of a right triangle, and the z squared is the hypotenuse. That's the first thing you should know. And it sh you should know it. Um, it's just one of those things you need to memorize. They're not often going to give it to you on the GMAT. The second thing is, uh, is the area of, uh, of the trapezoid. And the area of the trapezoid is going to be the height... Uh, times the average of the two lengths. Now, if you were to turn this trapezoid on its side, it would look something like this, right? This would be the height, and here would be length 1, and this would be length 2. So by finding the average of these two, basically what we're saying is we're borrowing some of the space from here and and here and reversing them and making a nice square. And that's why we're looking for the average because then we, it, it, we just treat it as if it's a square and we find the area. Anyway, that's kind of conceptually how it works. But in terms of formulas, 
it's going to be the height times uh, length 1 plus length 2 over 2, because you're finding the average. Uh, and, and that's going to be the area. So that's what they're testing you on. If you know these two, you'll be set. So let's solve. First thing we want to do is, oh, uh, before I do that, let me read the question. So 145 says, the trapezoid shown in the figure above represents a cross-section of a rudder of a ship. Okay, who cares about that? If the distance from A to B is 13 feet, so they tell us the hypotenuse is 13, what is the area of the cross-section of the rudder in square feet? Okay, so now we have to find the area of all this in square feet. Okay, good to go. Um, first step is uh, obviously going to be to find the height, and height is going to be this line here, right? They give us the hypotenuse, and they give us one of the sides of this right triangle. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the length here is. 5 squared plus this mysterious uh, side equals 13 squared, and 13 squared is 169. 5 squared is going to be 25. So what you then have is h squared equals 169 minus 25 equals 144. Take the square root of both sides, and you get h equals 12. 12 times 12 is 144. So we know 12, or h is 12. Something else that I should point out here is that this is a special type of right triangle called a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. You'll see this a lot on the test. A lot of times when you see right triangles, and one side is, is, uh, is 12, and one side is 5, you know the third side is going to be 13. Sometimes they, they'll, they'll give you a 12 and a 13, and then you should just kind of know that it's 5. Sometimes uh, they'll give you other types of, of right triangles, like, uh, like a 3, 4, 5. That's pretty common as well. But there are some right triangles. There's, I think, three different types of right triangles that you should try to memorize. Because if you, if you have that in your arsenal, you can just pull it out during the exam, and it saves you a lot of time. But enough about that. It's just a little aside that I wanted to, uh, to bring up. Okay, so we know h is 12. Let's plug it into this equation. We get 12 times length 1 is 2 feet, length 2 is 5 feet. So 2 plus 5 over 2 equals what? It's going to be 12 times 7 over 2 equals something. We can cross multiply or cancel out and get a 6. 6 times 7 is 42. And 42 is answer choice C. On to number 146. And 146 says, in a certain sequence, the term x to the n uh, is given by the formula x, equal, or x to the n equals 2x to the n minus 1 minus a half of x to the n minus 2 uh, for all n greater than or equal to 2. They give us x to the 0 equals 3 and x to the 1 equals 2. And they tell us that x to, or no, we're supposed to find out what is x to the, to the 3 or x, yeah, x to the 3. Well, 0, 1, I think the one we're missing here is x to the 2, so we should figure that out. Because, as you can see in this equation, not only do we have to plug in x to the n minus 1, which is 1 lower than the number, x to the n minus 1 would be x to the 2, right? Because 3 minus 1 is 2, so we would need to figure this out anyway. But also, we need to plug in n minus 2. What we do here is we first use x, uh, x to the first, or x to the 1, to, it equals 2, and we plug that in to figure out what x to the 2 is. So, yeah, it sounds kind of confusing, but I think when I start doing it, it will all make sense. So, x to the 2, if n were 2, right, then 2 minus 1 would be 1. So, 2 times x to the 1. So, 2 times 2, right here, minus half of x to the n minus 2, that's going to be 3, equals, would be 4, and then 3 over 2, so 8 over 2 minus 3 over 2 equals 5 over 2. So we just found out that x to the 2 is 5 over 2. Now that we have that, we can figure out what x to the 3 is. So we don't need that anymore. x to the 3 is, uh, is going to be 
see, 2 times x to the n minus 1, in this case it's going to be 5 over 2, minus half of n minus 2, 3 minus 2 is 1, so x to the 1 is 2. Now we solve for x to the third. Okay, these cancel out, uh, and then we're left with 5 minus the 2 over 2 is going to be 1, so 5 minus 1, and that is 4. And 4 is answer C. Kind of a, not really a tough question, but one that requires a lot of, a lot of work. Sort of a time sink question is what I like to call those. On to 147. 147 looks like this. It's a V, and then there's like a line here. And then this is S, and there's a dot here called R. They tell you that this is 10 feet, and this is five feet, and there's like a little wavy water here. And the question for 147 says, in the figure above, V represents an observation point at one end of a pool. From V, an object is actually located at the bottom of the pool at point R. So there's an object right here uh, that is actually, um, it appears to be at point S. So when you're standing from up here and you're looking down, so when you're looking down like this, Instead of seeing the object, because of the way the water is, you're actually seeing that. Okay, if VR equals 10 feet, so this whole thing here is, uh, is 10 feet, what is the distance RS in feet between, uh, let's see, what is the, the distance RS in feet between the actual position of the perceived position on the object. Okay, so let me revise something a little bit. So what they said here is that the 10 feet actually refers to just um, the edge of the pool all the way to R, right? No, that's not what it says. This whole thing is still 10 feet. They are telling us that VR is 10 feet. So V is up here, R is here. So they're saying this hypotenuse here is 10 feet. Okay, so far so good. Um, what we are going to be looking for is RS. So we are going to be looking for this. What is this? This distance here between R and S. How do we figure that out? First of all, we need to figure out what this area is. Well, this whole thing is 10 feet. Let's, let's call this X because we're going to be solving for it. This whole thing is 10 feet. Then this area here, this little section here, is going to be 10 feet minus X, right? So now let's set up a Pythagorean, set up the Pythagorean theorem, and, and solve for uh, solve for x. So five squared plus ten minus x uh, squared equals ten squared. That's going to be twenty five plus ten minus x squared equals hundred. Subtract twenty five from both sides and you get 10 minus x squared equals 75. We can take the square root of both sides to get 10 minus x equals the square root of 75. Then you get negative x equals the square root of 75 minus 10. And uh, if you divide both sides by negative one, you get x equals 10 minus square root of 75. Is that one of the answer choices? No, it is not. However, 10 minus 5 the square root of 3 is and that's just you know 75 is uh, 25 times 3 which is 5 and 5 so 10 minus 5 square root of 3 so the answer is going to be a check me out in the next video when we deal with a super super hard problem that had me frustrated for for quite a while Join me in the next video.